Well, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us on today's Midweek Moment. Listen, I am so excited about what we will share. I am Dr. Annette Jones, the Senior Pastor of South Suburban Missionary Baptist Church and your host today. Today, we celebrate the commencement of some of our graduates within South Suburban Missionary Baptist Church. As you know, graduations happen every year and commencements give family and friends an opportunity to celebrate the new beginnings and new areas that each will embark upon. There is a lot of pomp and circumstances around these types of celebrations. Rightly so, because each graduate deserves to be honored for all of their hard work. The scripture tells us in Proverbs 3 and 27 to give honor to whom honor is due and give honor when honor is due. So we should also give honor when we have the opportunity. So we are using the platform to give honor to some of our 2022 graduates on today. Nothing makes me more prouder than to recognize those in our church in South Suburban who have achieved such an important milestone in their lives. As we invite them to this platform to discuss their journey, let us put in the chat or comment section congratulatory remarks and share this midweek moment with others. So let's welcome on today to today's platform, Minister Zanetta Dabney. Hello, how are you, Pastor? Hi, Minister Zanetta. So happy to have you on our platform on today as we are celebrating the commencement. Well, I want to start off with just asking, why are we celebrating you today? Um, well, I would say that you are celebrating me today because I am graduating with my master's in accountancy from the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. <laughs> Congratulations. You know, Thank I you. am so overly overly proud of you, how you have just taken on all of your endeavors silently, seamlessly, mm -hmm. you know, without any, um, any kind of big fanfare. And I don't think we often recognize all of the achievements that you've made along the way, how you got your bachelor's from the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign and all of the accomplishments that you've done, even uh, at your jobs and the various assignments and career uh, goals and plans that you've laid out for yourself and how you've accomplished them independently. Mm -hmm. So I want to definitely say welcome and not only that, but congratulations. Thank you. For your great achievements, because I, I think you have done such a marvelous work. And I know I'm not the only one that's proud. You have your sisters and your brothers and your mom, of course. Mm -hmm. And I know your father is looking over and just smiling with glee at all of the things that you've done already. Yes, I would hope so. <laughs> all right, so this commencement we know is fast approaching. What feelings do you have about your accomplishments? Oh my, many, anxiety, <laughs> but also just excitement. I think for me, um, as you said, I tend to kind of work you know, behind the scenes, I guess, um, more quietly than most, um, not saying either way is, you know, better than the next, but I'm more shy with kind of expressing what I've done and how, what I've accomplished in my career and, um, you know, both educationally and professionally. Uh, so it's exciting, but it's also just, you know, a moment of reflection for me because getting my master's this time around was, um, or just going back to school this time around and getting my master's was not easy because I was still working full time. Um, I'm also more in a you know higher level at my job. So I have staff I'm managing. There's, and then obviously we do a lot of stuff in ministry. Um, my life is pretty busy. <laughs> so, it is full. It is yes, busy. it is full. Um, and so when I think about, you know, all the moments that I've had, there was actually moments uh, within my journey, getting my master's where I had to take a semester off because it was just too much and I need to kind of fall back um, because I was part time. I wasn't just taking a class here or there. I was literally part time. And then in some cases, almost full time, depending on the hours I was taking. So it's been a journey, but it's exciting. And I'm just ready for it to be over. <laughs> I'm ready to move on. 
Well, I heard I heard so much in that how what it took for you to get and arrive at this moment, part time, full time, no time mm -hmm. just to get a, a break and um, be able to center yourself. I know you always talk about uh, centering and yes. coming back into balance mm -hmm. with things. And so for you to have uh, not only achieved that, but brought that balance to your life and handling all these various things like ministry, like your career, like uh, uh, going to school and then family issues and things mm -hmm. that are you, you might be experiencing. So I know it took a lot for you to arrive at this moment. And again, so very peacock proud of, <laughs> uh, of all that you've, you've done already. And those feelings of anxiety, now they're over because that mm -hmm. part is passed. <laughs> and uh, now the celebration begins. And definitely this is a time where we need to be celebrating your great work and all the things you've done. And, and I know you're shy about uh, really giving yourself the highest accolades possible, but let me do it. <laughs> uh, as your pastor, I, I can tell the story and, and just say how much um, hard work I saw and dedication and commitment that you had to this journey and ensuring, I mean, every time we talked on our minister's meetings, you were talking about, you know, I got assignments, I've got these things, but yet you showed up at every one of our meetings. You never failed to continue to do ministry work right along with everything else. And, and I, I like that because that helps us to understand that uh, God doesn't want us to fade in the background, right? While we're doing ministry, but we've got to keep living and we've got Absolutely. to keep doing doing some of those other things uh, and, and and show forth uh, what God can do and how God can strengthen us during this time. So I want to ask, what inspiration did you draw upon to really encourage you during this season? I would definitely say uh, just thinking about the goals that I had set for myself, you know, many years ago, and I'm one that tend to reflect and reset goals annually. Um, I have a plan. <laughs> I'm very much so structured in that way. I'm very type A in nature, personality wise. So I'm big on organization. I'm big on planning. Um, I'm big on structure, but I also just wanted to do things that I know would propel me forward. And so in thinking of what the end game would be, that was really the motivation because if I thought about what was in front of me more immediately, I would have quit. Uh, but I think, you know, there's something about keeping the end game in front of you constantly, keeping your dreams and your aspirations in front of you, whether that's writing them down or whether that's, you know, kind of doing, um, you know, a visualization of it. Maybe you want to do like, you know, an inspirational board or something like that. I'm constantly trying to put my dreams in front of me so that I know what you're doing is not in vain because sometimes, you know, during, especially in this time where we're living now with living through a pandemic and trying to just live in an economy that is just upside down. I mean, it's, it's hard. Sometimes you just want to give up, you know, and say, well, what is really the purpose of this? Right. Yes. But I think when I constantly think about again, where this can take me or how I can leverage this degree to get to that next step, that really inspired me greatly. Oh, that's wonderful. So as you move into this next stage of life, what I heard and what you just said were so many lessons that you will take forward. What 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 are some others that you might uh, have thought about in terms of your reflection as you reflect on this journey? What are some lessons that you will take forward? Definitely. Um, persistence is key, right? I think that in anything that you do, it's easy to walk away from something, but it's hard to finish something. And that's something that I take with me always. I think a lot of times, um, especially when you're juggling both ministry and secular careers, it's easy to say, well, you know, you want to put ministry first or, you know, you got to focus on ministry. But truly, it's having that harmony between the two. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is what I found is that to do ministry for, for Zanetta, having a professional career adds to my successful ministry and that, you know, I'm able to, where possible, give financially to ministry, where possible, use my skills that I've learned 
within my professional career to help those within ministry, to me, they go hand in hand. I don't really see them as, you know, two distinct things. And I know a lot of times I feel it's a myth that, you know, for you to be within the context of ministry, you have to kind of suffer or, you know, have a, um, you know, somewhat of a lesser life. You know, I don't, I don't live by that standard. I think that you can still be successful from a secular perspective. And as I mentioned, leverage those tools to really push past what you need to a ministry to help grow and move and educate and, and ensure that, you know, those that are within ministry, those that have been oppressed, those that have been, you know, the marginalized people, they can learn from, you know, a lot of the things that we know and we learn from our professional careers. And so what I'm loving now in my life is that I'm seeing how the two are kind of hand in hand and even seeing how, you know, what I've done or what I'm doing or how I'm constantly pushing forward from an educational perspective is helping others to see past their own situation. I'm really big in financial you know, health and wealth. And a lot of that comes from my career. It comes from me studying and getting my master's and doing these things and seeing how that's helping others transform and evolve their lives. I just, I'm excited to see that, you know? And so I think it's, again, marrying the two things um, because the principles are very much so similar, but I think they're not as always called out as strongly within ministry. So helping the professional side of things to bridge that gap, I think is really important. I would say another lesson that I've learned outside of that persistency is just um, remaining diligent because, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's something about uh, a continual effort to know that even though it's hard, even though there's going to be moments where you want to throw in the towel and you want to give up and you're saying, again, as I mentioned, what is the purpose of this? staying diligent will get you very far in life. And I think it's easy, as I said, to quit something. It's not as easy to finish something. And there were so many moments where I was just like, do I really even want to get like, what is the point, right? I'm already kind of quote unquote successful, right? Relatively in your own respect. And why then continue? What's the point? No, there's so much more that can be had. You think you're touching the surface now, please, right? You have to continue to push past and see that once you constantly elevate and you get yourself, you know, certain things that can open the door for many other things. And so I just am grateful for the diligence as well. And I would say the last thing would be just remaining in God in the midst of this. And I think that is key because to your point, I was just having this conversation with my mom. You know, she is always the one that's saying, hey, definitely go after your dreams, but don't miss God in the midst of it, right? And I think that that's critical because it can sometimes be distracting, right? You're constantly trying to work towards, you know, an effort that may be adjacent to ministry, but having God at the center before every class praying or before every class meditating just to make sure that God comes through and that God is walking with you in this journey, that was a key, key, key success factor to me being able to you know, move forward in this. And so um, I would say those are definitely three key lessons I've learned throughout this journey. Oh, wonderful. Uh, what I heard was PCD and then a little bit of faith with it. Mm -hmm. And that different from OCD, but PCD persistence and having a, a complementary balance uh, with ministry and also secular career, and then having that diligence. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, last but not least, keeping that faith uh, in God, continuing your practices, right, of praying and uh, meditating and bringing God into the forefront of everything that you do. Wonderful lessons, mm -hmm. truly wonderful lessons to take forward. So you've done all these great things. You've, you've went forward, you've got now this master. And, and I know how it could be in that, you know, you, you're trying to figure out what, what is the next, right? I've accomplished this and I've accomplished that. And you are still young. I mean, young, you are still young <laughs> enough. I don't care how old you think you might be, but you're young. Pushing for you. No, you're not. You're <laughs> uh, but, but still young enough that, um, that there is so much more ahead. So what, what is your next endeavor? What do you, how do you foresee your next? 
Yeah, I love that question. So I think for me, you know, as far as um, education is concerned, I want to continue to move forward, um, you know, get certain certifications, um, multiple certifications now that I have some other things to support that. But then also, obviously, um, I don't see myself getting additional degrees within my field. I think I'll just kind of pad in a ton of certifications. But for sure, um, definitely focusing from a a ministry perspective, going to um, a divinity school. That is very much so important for me going to seminary. So um, I've been doing a lot of research on schools. And I had already kind of made up my mind some years ago when I thought that this was the path that I wanted to go on, but that, you know, was a little bit redirected and stagnant just based on my own will. Um, But now that I'm back in it, I think that's definitely the next thing for me. So um, I'm looking forward to that. I think that's going to be quite a journey. Uh, I'm nervous about it, (laughs) but I'm also very excited. So right now it's really about me putting in the work to position myself from a professional perspective so that when I do take on, um, you know, seminary, I'm, I'm, you know, relatively in harmony with everything so that, you know, I can really fully commit myself to that and also still, um, you know, stay well with my work. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Again, I know it's going to be another journey, another chapter, that's going to just blow my mind, I'm sure. But um, I'm excited about that. Wonderful. I, I know that God has a mind-blowing miracles headed your way. There's a resurrection coming in another area. And God is about to really show you uh, that that you can handle it all. That, that there is so much more, right? There is so much more mm-hmm. that God has for you. Every day we talk about that. Uh, in, in church, there is so much more yes. that God has. And um, if God helps us and directs us in this area, definitely God will not leave nor forsake us. And so I believe that the Lord is with you throughout this journey and the next uh, as you continue to pursue the things that God has has pressed upon your heart and your mind to do. So with that, if you can leave a message for your younger self, what would you tell you? That's a great question. Um, hmm. I would probably tell my younger self to um, handle things in a way to which understanding that everything that you do, every move that you make, um, every decision that's made within your life, it all will eventually pay off. I think it's easy to, um, you know, I look back on my life a lot of times. I'm like, man, I wish I probably could have did this or if I would have went this this direction, maybe this would have been differently. And it's easy to kind of count the regrets, but I think it's harder to really count the wins. And so for me, um, it's really important to not look at life and regret but take those opportunities that you think you, you know, misstepped or maybe moved, maybe not in the way that you should have moved or that you could have moved or that opportunity that you forewent instead of going here. Take that as lessons learned to eventually push you forward and eventually get to where God has you to go. And so I think it's really about, again, not looking at life in a regretful perspective, but looking at it as opportunities to um, propel you to where, you know, God wants to take you. And I believe that if you do that, if I were to, you know, tell my younger self, if you were to do that, you'll eventually find that ultimate space that God is trying to place you in, whether that's from a career perspective, a ministry perspective, um, you know, whatever type of perspective, I just think that's the way to go, you know, learn from, you know, your choices versus, um, dwell on them and, and see them as a negative uh, versus a positive. So that would definitely be a, a key lesson I would tell my younger self. Yeah, I like that. Have no regrets, right? Mm-hmm. Use every stepping stone as an opportunity. And um, definitely, you know, the end is that you were going to come out successful, right? You might not have knew it then, mm-hmm. but you can look back now and say, you know what, you're going to win. It, it mm-hmm. doesn't matter what, what, which way you go or what direction you're led, 
you will win. You will succeed. I, I want to add uh, along your journeys uh, as you encounter the next ones and then the other ones after that and the next and the next after that to have fun along the journey. Continue to embrace uh, not only what you have to do physically and and um, educationally and career wise, but along the journey, have fun so that you don't miss that opportunity so mm -hmm. that you keep that before you as well. And you enjoy life because it's worth living. It's Absolutely. Really worth oh, yeah. I, I fully believe that yeah. as well. And I will say for sure, um, I've had a lot of fun. <laughs> I've had a lot of fun throughout the hard work I will say the opportunities that I've been afforded have positioned me to really enjoy life in a very great way um, and so I'm trying to continue at this stage I feel like I'm more settled in what I'm doing I think mm -hmm. you know you get a little older some things I liked to do before maybe not as much but it's fun to me fun is more so relative right yeah. and so um, I think it, exactly at this stage in my life, I'm definitely enjoying it my way. So I appreciate that. So, um, yeah, I, I, I fully agree. Keeping that at the forefront is important because you can get swamped in the day to day. You can get swamped in, um, you know, the task. But for me, uh, once I check it off, I check it off. I keep it moving and we just go to the next thing. So yes. Wonderful. I'm glad you're enjoying it. That's wonderful. Yes. <laughs> what, 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 what final messages can you share with others about pursuing their education or developing their skills? What, what can you leave with our audience today? Find something that you're passionate about in a real way. Um, I think that, you know, the career path that I've taken uh, wasn't necessarily um, now that I look back, it was more so this what made sense for me. Um, I'll never forget how I even got into this space, taking an accounting course in high school, literally. And it was such the first course we took. It was like 15 of us in the class. They had just launched the accounting course at Hillcrest High School. Whoop, whoop, that's where I went. And um, it was a few of us and like 15 of us in the class. And I was like, this is pretty cool. This seems like I could do this. Right. And I remember my instructor at the time um, he was highly encouraging it because he's like, you know, you can really make a great career out of this. And I really didn't know much else. I mean, I knew church. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so funny because uh, people have their own misconceptions. People think they know me. They really don't. OK, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but I really knew church. Like I was like, church is my life. So my idea of like, you know, living at the time or a career was, you know, you want to go to church, but church has to be the forefront, right? And so maybe you do something to supplement your income, to pay your bills, but like church is it. This whole yeah. idea of having a corporate career and, you know, that being at the fore, it, it just wasn't in my mind. Mm -hmm. It was just not. And so um, I remember at the time, you know, and, and even when I would hear people, I want to say this, even when I would hear people speak about having, I would be like, well, it, it was like foreign language to me, honestly, it really was. And I remember the guy, uh, the teacher, he explaining how like, this was such a great career path and you should do this and, you know, all these things. And so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, you know, we'll see. I don't know. And I remember the next year we had another class because they had piloted the first class. It went successful. The second class, not as many people registered for it. It was literally three of us in the class. Wow. But they still kept it for that year. It was so weird. And I remember we learned what we learned. The three of us would come. And after that, they actually phased it out because they phased out the second level of it. The first level they kept because that's where the most people were, you know, there. But the second level, they didn't keep. And if you want to take it out to go to another uh, local school, because at that time they were letting you kind of like share spaces, uh, share mm -hmm. classes across different schools. And um, that's when it clicked. I was like, this is what I want to do. I learned a lot. I felt like it was a good fit. And <laughs> I now just even think back, like I wasn't open to anything else. Right. I was just like, this is what I want to do. And that's, again, very type A, very just made up mind. Um, but I would say now I probably would have explored other opportunities. At this juncture in my life, I see really where my passion is mm -hmm. and transparently what I'm doing is not really my passion, but I believe that this is a time where you can explore your passion 
and still find yourself making a good living out of doing that. The time is different now. You know, when I was coming up, you didn't really get paid for passion projects. It just wasn't a thing, right? And if you did, it came over a period of time, you know? Um, so, and I can go into that for, for many reasons, but to kind of just directly more kind of wrap up the question here, I would just say, be passionate about, you know, what it is that you desire to do and just make sure it makes sense for you, right? You know, map it out, plan it out, be passionate. Another thing I would highly recommend, network. People don't do enough of that. Mm-hmm. I've been lucky enough to just learn that over my career, networking is key. It's yeah. more about who you know in many ways. Um, people say versus what you know. I won't say versus what you know. I'll say and what you know, because you can know somebody and still not know what you're doing. And so it's not going to last, right? You got to have both. But I really believe it is about who you know in conjunction with what you know. And um, so networking is key, making sure that, you know, to be successful in your career and um, choosing exactly what you want to do, network, talk to people that are in the areas that you desire, talk to people that are in the field that you are trying to strive towards and see if it makes sense for you. You know, um, you may think it looks one way and then talking to someone that's doing it every day may say, no, nah, it's actually something else. Right. And so you just want to have that network open as well. So those things I think are, are really key. Be passionate about what you're doing. And then also um, just, you know, make sure you're following uh, up and, and connecting with the right people. Wonderful. So even if we shoot for the stars and we land on the moon, we're still successful. Absolutely. So mm-hmm. it's, it's going after you, what you might seem, what might seem to be your passion right now. And it could change mm-hmm. because we are evolving creatures. And so yes. things could change and you might find that there's another passion. There's another endeavor mm-hmm. uh, that you have. And it's OK because it gives us opportunities to explore so many new and different things. This world is so open to anything that we desire and we want to do. We, we have the ability now to do those things. And so definitely your words of encouragement and things that they can take forward are fitting for this time in this season. So thank I you. like what you said too, because I just want to add this. That's so key, right? Because we're in such a time where if you say right now, I want to start a business, you probably can do that. Mm-hmm. If you say right now, you know, I want to have my own YouTube channel and make some money, you can definitely do that. If you say you want to be an Instagram star, you can absolutely do that. If you say you don't want to go to school, but make a lot of money through social media, there's so much opportunity. The way that the world works is so different. And so um, I, I just, I see school, I see education, I see you know, opportunity to success so differently now. So I agree. I mean, try your hand in everything. And I like what you said. It's it's actually a quote by an anonymous writer that says humans evolve and change every single day. The things we want today will be the very things that we hate tomorrow. I love that quote because it's so true, right? And it speaks to how, like you said to your point, there's so much variation in our desires and, you know, what may be palatable to me today may absolutely be something that I distaste tomorrow. So it's just, it's, it's the world really is your oyster. That's a true statement at this point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go for what it is you desire. Yes. Well, thank you (laughs) so much, Minister Zanetta. This has been truly a wonderful conversation. Thank you for sharing uh, so much insight into not just your journey, but things we can look at in terms of how we move forward in life and how we can take that, have balance, have zeal about what we're doing and enjoy life and also have passion around the things that we're doing so that we are always reaching for new heights and new things and new opportunities and making a difference in our own lives Mm -hmm. and, and, and those that are watching us, right? Because there are so many that are behind us who are watching what we're doing and how we're handling life. And that's really key that we also get it right, Absolutely. that we also help others who, who are watching what we're doing. So truly, this has been a, a great opportunity and a time to share and talk with you. Thank you so much. And I want to thank all of those that are listening on today. Hopefully you've gotten uh, a nugget or two about how to keep going and not give up on any of your dreams or your passions and uh, keep pursuing new opportunities. 
Minister Zanetta has really given us a, a, a full picture of success and what success can look like and how education in all forms can help on the journey. If you want to continue to help us to continue to share the word of God with others, please do so by giving unto South Suburban Missionary Baptist Church at SSMBC at paypal.me slash SSMBC. So that's paypal.me slash SSMBC. Please consider giving so we might continue to bring to you such words of wisdom, such knowledge, and continue to share the word of God with you. We love you. Thank you so much for joining us on today. Thank you, Minister Zanetta, for all you've done and sharing with us on today. Thank you for having me.